Hey guys, Madison here, back for another Film Friday. So, fun story time. I was just adjusting a light over in the corner there, and I was moving something out of the way to change the positioning of the light, and I just saw one of the most giant spiders I have ever seen in my life. Not quite worthy of being called a tarantula, but pretty darn close. Just gave me a complete heart attack, so I'm sorry. My heart is like racing right now. <laughs> Luckily, it was dead. It was dead. If it had not been dead, I might be dead. I don't know. <laughs> um, woo! So that just gave me a giant scare, the, the most giant scare I've had in a while. Oh my goodness, but it's dead. It's been taken care of. Hopefully I never see one of those ever again. So apologies if I sound a little distressed right now. Also, disclaimer number two, I just got back from the eye doctor, so I'm sorry if my eyes look a little weird. Hopefully not. I did not get my eyes dilated today, but I did have those really annoying pressure drops put in there. So my eyes were like spilling, oozing yellow dye. Is that TMI? I don't know, but <laughs> uh, so hopefully I got all of the yellow dye out of my eyes, off my eyes. Um, so yeah, if you see anything weird, if my eyes look a little weird in this reaction, that's what's going on. Okay, with all of that said and all of the disclaimers out of the way, I am very excited to say that I am finally watching Far and Away, starring Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. It's been a bit, it's been a little while since I have reacted to a Tom Cruise movie here on the channel, so I figured it was about time. I put it on the poll. It won by a narrow margin, but it won. And I'm really excited. This week's poll was Irish themed. Like all of the movies I chose had to have some sort of Irish connection, Irish themes, Irish characters, because I know St. Patrick's Day has already come and gone, but I wanted to celebrate the occasion even if it was a little bit late. So. We're doing Far and Away this week. I knew Daniel, my editor, would be super excited. This is like his favorite movie, or one of his favorite movies. He's been wanting me to react to it for a while. I kept telling him I'll get to it, I'll get around to it. And the perfect excuse finally came along. So I put it on the poll, it won. And uh, yeah, here we go guys. I'm also excited because I don't think it's a Western, but I think it might be a little bit I don't know because I don't know much about this movie, but anything that's a little bit Western, I get excited to watch it. And I also know that Ron Howard directed this movie, and as far as I know, this will be only the second Ron Howard directed movie I've watched, the other being The Missing, a Western starring Kate Blanchett and Tommy Lee Jones, and I loved that movie. I really liked Ron Howard's style. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I've seen a couple of other Ron Howard directed movies, but I really like his style. Uh, John Williams also did the soundtrack for this movie, which makes me super excited because John Williams is one of my favorite composers, so I feel like this movie can't go wrong. I feel like there's no way I don't like this movie. I mean, it's possible, but it includes so many of my favorite things. So uh, without further ado, guys, I'm really excited to jump in and watch this movie, finally. So let's do this. Let's watch Far and Away. Eighteen ninety-two, right in my favorite time period. I love Scottish, Irish, Celtic music. I love that flavor of music. So I'm loving this already. <laughs> Oh, it's just a little Irish village. Her beautiful eyes were a terrible heart. Three days in his grave, she ran off with his purse. That bloody lad now had bad things on his way in. I hope they kill him for a life on this country that never belonged to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness, that looks bad. Take me home to my sons. Damn you! 
But the hell with you! Will you look at our little brother? He can't keep hold of his ass. My ambition's a little grander than yours. To break your back on land that isn't your own, that belongs to the landlord, Christie. Hold your face up, lad. Give us something we can aim at. We shag off the peria. Just the nosebleeds, all we're asking. I've no wish to fight you. <laughs> I don't want to, but I will. <laughs> <sighs> About to be a bad day. My soul is departing from me, Joseph. Well, you can't die. We need you here, Dad. What happened to their mother, I wonder? We'd be as well to sell off a thing or two now that the old man's gone. Is that any way to keen over the death of our father? Well, that didn't take long. Grow the potatoes and pick them yourself, Joseph, you ambitious boy. No. Joseph! <laughs> we thought you died, Dad. <laughs> No, he's not dead yet. <laughs> I was as dead as a stone, I tell you. I've come back to tell you something. You're an especially odd boy. You came back from the dead to tell me that I'm odd. <laughs> dreams, my boy, end up in a glass of ale. Not my dreams, Dad. I'll work my own land someday. Land is a man's very own soul. If you manage it, your old dad will be smiling down on you from heaven above. Is he actually dead this time? I think he's really dead this time. It would be really funny if he sat up out of nowhere and went, Oh, one more thing. <laughs> Say nothing to them, lads. This country's ours. They don't exist. What dead man is this? You needn't answer, but hear these words. I represent Mr. Daniel Christie, who by right of law owns this land and all improvements upon it. Bad timing, bro. They haven't even buried the man yet. No consideration. Bastards are burning our house! What? That will do. Where is this landlord Christie? No oh, justice for what he's done. Talk about adding insult to injury. Only killed chicken to pigs till now. He's a pig and a chicken all in one the same, Daniel Christie. Give him a proper taste of death. Now, Lord, shit. Captain Moonlight. Captain Moonlight. It's the code, the rebel code. Don't breathe it to a living soul, do you understand? No. So strange hearing Tom Cruise with an Irish accent. <laughs> Daddy. Uh, it was too good to be kept a secret, sir. Daniel shoot himself in the balls, I'll wager, and come hobbling home in tears. I'm having trouble believing that Tom Cruise is related to these two guys. We'll see it your way. <laughs> We're going to America, lads. I tried. I don't have a good Irish accent, but I tried. I love this music so much. <laughs> I'm gonna have a new John Williams score to add to my list. God bless all in this house. Down from the north, are you? I prefer to keep my business to myself, if you please. God bless you, everyone. Oh, God bless you, sir. How are you, sir, tonight? Oppressed. Oh. He doesn't look very oppressed. He's keeping himself to himself, that one. Well, then it's one of two things. Enterprise or love? It isn't love. When you're a man of business, it's brought me nothing but misery. I'd trade it all away for 15 minutes of freedom. Freedom is a rare thing in these parts. It is. To a long and happy life, Mr. Christie. God bless you, lad. He doesn't look like he means it. Uh oh. What have I gotten? He's going to assassinate this man. <laughs> He's not going to do it, is he? He's going to change his mind at the last minute. Uh-oh. There goes your ride. Uh, it was not meant to be. This is a difficult murder. Good evening, Mr. Christie. Look at that house. Oh my goodness. He 
He's like, now I really hate him. <laughs> if you caught that tombstone reference, I applaud you. I saw you galloping in the field. A lady must always be civilized even when she rides. Ladies must always be civilized. And this is the part where he falls for the daughter of a man he hates. Somebody there? Just say something, dude. It gets worse the longer you stand there. A lucky horseshoe. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Father! Oh, ooh, right in the leg. <laughs> oh my gosh. Father! Help! In the stable! Put you on the pusher ball! It's the devil himself! I'm Joseph Donnelly, of the family Donnelly, that you pushed off our land. Prepare to pay for your crimes. <laughs> well, good thing it backfired, or he would have just committed murder in front of that man's entire family. He's a low-born blatherskite of filth. Our duty is to restore him to full health so he can hear his own neck crack when he dangles from the hangman's noose. Turn away, Shannon, and protect the innocence of your eyes. The ladies are coming by this afternoon for tea. Feeling very sick all of a sudden. <laughs> Beer. Oh! Uh, a poor misguided Robin has broken a window pane. What a manufactured lie! <laughs> Don't you do it! Don't you do it! Bad girl. Very bad. <laughs> The man's unconscious. Show some respect. <laughs> she feels no shame. <laughs> Her face. Oh my gosh. Girl, once wasn't enough. Her mom's gonna come in and it's gonna be so awkward. Nope, it got worse. <laughs> He's as ugly as sin, and the most vicious creature I've ever set eyes upon. Did you get a look at him, Shannon? <laughs> oh yeah, she did. We've come for your prisoner, Mr. Christie. Good afternoon, ladies. Oh my goodness, <laughs> we were seen. No, no, keep calm. You're safe and protected. Go back to your sinful card playing. <laughs> that guy gives me the heebie-jeebies. Hello, Shannon. He's a brilliant young man. He was educated at Trinity. Of course. Of course. He's had a rough day. Pitchfork to the leg. Gun backfires in his face. Privacy violated. And they have no idea this young Irish man is about to come crash their party. <laughs> Child. <laughs> it's very modern. It's from America. Scandalous. Oh my goodness. Here's Johnny. <laughs> and now he's falling down the stairs. I burnt many houses in the line of duty. Am I meant to remember yours? <laughs> Maybe you'll remember this. That's what he gets. You don't just burn people's houses and get away with it. Pistols. Tomorrow at dawn. Pistols? As in, like, a duel? What's buzzing around inside that head of yours, my little monkey? The day's been disrupted, Father. Heaven forbid. She secretly enjoyed that. <laughs> All the excitement disrupting her boring, fancy life. Oh my gosh. I'm running away. <laughs> She's so chaotic. I love it. Perhaps you're wondering why I'm running away. I'm running away because I'm modern and I'm going to a modern place. If I stay here, my mother will turn me into one of her stuffy old friends. No, thank you. 
I'm a little more interesting than that. Boy, here, have a look at this. Look! You can't read, can you? How pathetic. Land, it says. Land? Every resident of the United States is entitled to 160 acres of land. They've got so much of it, they give it away for free. Mm-hmm. And I'm going there. I'm going to have a place of my own. What do you need more land for? You're on half of Ireland, this is this. The took it, your people did. You said you wanted land. If that's what you want, then come with me. You're brave. You shoot men, you step on their necks. <laughs> I realized you could be very useful to me. Uh... You could be my serving boy. I could, I could make you a cup of tea. When tea time calls for it, yes. I'll throw the tea in your face and I'll piss on your boots before I serve the likes of you. Get out! Boy, I am giving you your freedom. I'm of Ireland, and I'll stay in Ireland till I die. That's in about five hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. His dad wanted him to go to America. Thought he wanted to go there, but I guess not. These weapons belong to my father's father. We're having two duels in two weeks, guys. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, see last week's reaction. I've asked to serve as your second in this barbarism. Choose one of those things. You had a good breakfast this morning, did you? It was grand, sir. Thank you. Good. Count away. Fifteen paces. This way, sub. Three. I knew nothing of your family Eleven. or their eviction. I'm sorry for Two. their pain. I understand why you came to murder me. Wow. Turn each man! You can't even see. I can't see anything! Boy! Boy! Get away Shut from up. There. Assess your stupidity, lad! Get away from me, woman! As you wish. Yeah. As you wish. Wait! Shut up! <laughs> I saved your neck, you remember that? Y'all, yeah. they're both so chaotic. This is gonna be hilarious. <laughs> Ooh, look at that cake. I want some. Thank you, boy. Don't call me boy. Forgive me if I'm intruding, but uh, I wonder if you'd enjoy a gentle stroll around the deck. A stroll would be delightful, Mr. McGuire. Parasol. In my imagination, America is a wonderfully modern place. What about the land? I beg your pardon? This girl's got in her head they're giving land away for free. Oklahoma Territory. The West's opening up. Well, how do you get it, Mr. McGuire? Is it there when you step off the boat? You have to travel a thousand miles or so. And when you get there, you'll have to run for the land in a race. Yeah, it's not going to be so easy. I didn't expect it to be so complicated. Uh, oh yeah. Any difficulty can be overcome with money. I'd like to speak to Mr. McGuire alone. Mr. McGuire, I do have money. But it's in the form of spoons. Ancient spoons made of silver. Well, I can recommend a couple of shops that'll treat you honestly. <laughs> What are you doing sitting at my table? I'm eating your chocolate cake. <laughs> oh, you're just upset because everything I've told you about is turning out to be true. I think you should cover your ankles. We can't show our ankles. That's scandalous. America. Her costumes are so pretty. I've arrived, Joseph. This is so not how I expected this to go, like how how he was gonna get to America. Hey mister, you Irish? I can take you to the ward boss. Need work? Need lodging? Go please somebody else, boy. Come on, Miss Christie. I'll find you a suitable hotel. Hey, McGuire! Welcome back! My goodness. Well, that was a turn of events. <laughs> Under the phrase escalated quickly in the di in the dictionary. <laughs> Over there. Don't shield me, Joseph. It's only a boxing match. <laughs> what? <laughs> you distracted me. You weren't concentrating. A scrappy Connemaraman, huh? Follow me. Not you, woman. You just cost me part of a tooth. Who is this bit of a sniff anyway, huh? My sister. Settle your bed. Sister! Oh, blood's not even the same temperature. <laughs> Shannon, All right, these people are my kind of people. And my kind doesn't like your kind. Oh, the politics of it all. 
Well, Donnelly, let's put you on the road to citizenship. We'll get you working and get you voting when the time comes. Don't leave me alone! Excuse me, Mr. Kelly. Oh, no, the world I'll ask you to leave this lady alone. Go ahead and ask. I've no wish to fight you. He's no wish to fight me. But he will. <laughs> Get him. Well, now, you knocked the piss out of the man and knocked the piss out of me. Huh? We'll take this scrapper and the girl here and lodge them at Molly Kay's. Shannon should appreciate having him around to protect her. Life's hard for a woman alone in the 1800s, especially in Boston. Molly! It's just as unpleasant for me as it is for- Ugh. We've got a brother and sister here, Molly. Need a room. Molly, Oh, great. Staying at a brothel. What could go wrong? This is your room here. Ours. You're not suggesting that we share this room, I hope. I don't care what you do in it, as long as you pay me a dollar a week. The room is fine, and we'll take it gratefully. Your sister was spoilt, I'd say. Plot twist. There's only one bed. Raise your hand if you've seen that one before. <laughs> there is a man on stilts. I think I like America. We've only been here a day. Look at the welcome we've got. Would you like a room? There you go. Would you like a job? Boy, here you go. How? about some land. Well, get a horse and help yourself. Maybe this is my destiny. On his deathbed, my father told me he'd be watching me from up above. If he bumps into Mr. McGuire up there, tell him I want my spoons back. <laughs> oh, imagine me standing on my own plot of land. Oh, Shannon, I'm dreaming of it now. Great fields of wheat as far as the eye can see. Oh, God! my land was my idea, you blathering fool! Maybe this is my destiny. If it weren't for me, Fong Bai, you wouldn't even be here! If it weren't for me, Miss High and Mighty, you'd have died outside the street! Possible. Give me back my pillow. Not in a hundred years. Shouldn't have given it away, Shannon. <laughs> He's just casually sleeping in his bloodstained shirt. <laughs> This book is irritating me. This is interesting. We're cutting back to Ireland. How could she be so cruel? Not to send us any word. She's been writing to me for some time. Huh. So have we had a little bit of a time jump here? Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. Burn the house to the ground! Oh no. Cut the moonlight! And destroy their pretty house. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Can they stop burning each other's houses down? This is no longer the Ireland of my birth. Our daughter's fallen into perilous ruin, Daniel. You must go to her now. Shannon? She's been in Boston these many months. And we shall find her there. They're gonna go to Boston? Keep working. You don't work, you don't get paid. So they've been there for months. They haven't even tried to go out west yet? Oh man, those factories. Bad place to be. All the stuff you inhale into your lungs. Whew. I think the prettiest girl in this factory is Joseph's sister. Well, you can say what you like, that, But I warn you, that redhead has a bite that stings. Get to work! Get your filthy hands off me, you ugly animal! That'll cost you a day's wage. Go ahead. Insult me again. Peep! <laughs> there goes tomorrow. Done! Don't do it. That was enough. Yeah, just walk away. Take Friday as well, you spineless little fraction of a man. <laughs> oh my goodness. What are you looking at? Well, I'm just trying to figure out what you're doing there. It's obvious what I'm doing. I'm cleaning my clothes. In a very strange way. You plunge and scrub. Plunge and scrub. Oh, you you plunging. And scrubbing. It's done. So angry. <laughs> Don't suppose you've calculated what the journey will cost. How much have you saved, Shannon? Not much if she's been insulting that guy every day. I said I'll get there and I'll get there. Well, you need supplies. Food, clothes. Ammunition, gun. 
Whenever I think of guns, I remember Stephen Chase. You're lucky to be rid of that piss-headed snob. Not for long. He worshipped me. There wasn't a puddle of mud he didn't lay his coat upon for me to walk across. Are you facing east? Facing east. Almost ready. <laughs> Thanks be to Jesus. Light. I'm in. Okay, Shannon. Joseph, am I beautiful at all? Never seen anything like you in all my living life. Oh. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Imagine having to hear that every night. Let's have another boxing match, gentlemen. This man has not been defeated tonight. I'll fight him. Oh my gosh, just going guns blazing. Somebody's got some pinup frustration. <laughs> Get this scrap or something this morning. Who's your boy there, Kelly? Joseph, shake hands with Mr. Darcy Burke, member of the city council. I shake your hand, Mr. Burke. But I'm not in a friendly mood. I came here to fight. Would you box and I tell you if I scared one up? I'll box any man you put in front of me. Bring him on. And I'll put money on you. Please, your best, gentlemen. To the line, gentlemen. Joseph. <laughs> They're all so much bigger than he is. Uh-oh. You're covered in blood. What happened to you? He's been prize fighting, but he'll survive. I did well tonight, didn't I? You beat them all, Joseph. But don't talk now. Shannon does not approve. Full of spit, isn't he? And passion. Not really, no. He's fairly dull. And the build on him. Me and the girls got swollen eyes from cocking at his bum. Well, goodbye, Grace. <laughs> well, would you tell him I just... Nice to meet you. Well, I just want to tell him... Good night, Grace. <laughs> Joseph, Look. Look at my boot down there. They gotta quit telling people that they're brother and sister and just get married already. That's more than plucking chickens in a mud. I'll have my horse and buggy money. There are other ways to get to Oklahoma, Joseph. You should have heard them shouting and cheering me on. Hold the line, gentlemen! <laughs> Fighting to earn that money. Man, plucking chickens would be an awful job. <laughs> you come to the body, you come to the face, and you move out of the way. When he's coming around, you get out of the way, and just stand there and look at them. <laughs> well, hello there, Joseph. Hello, Kara. Looking very dapper. Well, what do you think? Do you like it? Like my hat. Not at all. Needs to quit spending money on hats and get that wagon, that horse, all that stuff he needs to go to Oklahoma. There's my boy. Looking fit and dandy. How are you, Scrapper? It's never better, Mike. Mr. Bork would like a word with you. My, how the tables have turned. Now listen to me, lad. There's a man I want you to box. I'll box and I'll win. But you boys don't know me, Mr. Burke. That didn't go over well. What do you think you're doing pissing against the wind, huh? You like your suit? You like having a roof over your head? Cross me at your nothing. You do what you're told, I'll throw you out in the street, and every door you knock on will be slammed in your face. Do you understand? Huh. Good. It's not fun when somebody can pull your strings like that. Shannon? I'm drunk, Joseph! Oh, no. How can you be drunk? You just left my sight. Well, I finish it? I may or may not. Another one. Oh, Shannon, you came to America to be modern. Glad everything's working out. You have changed, Mr. Donnelly. Look at all those silly hats. You'll never get to Oklahoma. You've spent all your money. That's what I've been saying. Joseph! Hello, Grace. Will I be seeing you in church tomorrow morning? We can share a pew, me and you. Toodaloo. Same to you. If she goes into the confession box, she'll never come out, the little tramp. 
Grace is a tramp. She's a dancer in the burly queue. Mm -hmm. They're making a fool of you, the ward boss and his friends. Enough. Your money in their pockets and nothing more, Joseph. Yep. We're just using you. Said so that's enough. Um ah! no! Well, she's right. No! No! Ah! Ah! Oh my gosh. Why can't you say you like my hat? Why can't you say you like my suit? Why do you care so much? I've earned this. I've done well. Yeah, but you're spending all your money, man. Money that you're supposed to be using to travel out west with. Shannon! Shannon! Why don't you shag her and get it over with? <laughs> She's my sister. And I'm your mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of them believe it. Joseph, my Kenny's right, looking for Shannon? Tonight's the fight, the big fight. Have you seen her? No, I have not. She's there. Shannon is there. Really? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Don't do that. You get your brain smashed in every night. What's the difference? There's a world of difference. Get in there and box. I've got a hundred dollars spent on you tonight. Don't lower yourself, Shannon. You're too good for that. Did you not hear me? I said I'll split the winners with you. Take it. Take it. I thought you didn't want me to fight. You boxed the necklace before. The this is a fortune. I'll match that offer. You'll have Oklahoma. You'll never have to fight for them again. This will get us out of here. Us. Us? Why you? I mean you. <laughs> oh, he's got a woman to fight for now. This is the fight to the finish, gentlemen! Get him, Joseph, come on. Come on. <laughs> Knocked him down. I smell victory. <laughs> I'd enjoy it even more with a little strawberry tart. Mr. Buck would like some company. Uh, Shannon, why have you gotten yourself in this position? Get your hands off her back! There's too much money at stake here to filthy pig! Get back to scratch! No! You wanna forfeit? I there and fight! You're gonna forfeit! Shannon! And now because Shannon got herself in that position, he's not going to get his money. <laughs> this is painful to watch. Dadgum it. Get this loser out of my club. <sighs> Guys, it was going so well. Does that man just randomly walk around on stilts every night? Oh, he's lighting lamps. Did you tell them we're in Jefferson Court? Number six Jefferson Court. Her family has come from Ireland. They're here in Boston. They're offering a reward. <laughs> uh... Have you seen a girl like that? Find her. Do your job. You'll never get anything out of these people. They're drunks. Her family is in Jefferson Court. Number six, Jefferson Court. Oh my gosh, I hope she's okay. Shannon. Do come in, Scrapper. That's our money. There isn't a penny here, it doesn't originate with me. <laughs> you won't work here, box here, nothing. But I saw it coming the first time you walked in off the boat. Molly K, these two are banished. You shelter them even a night. I'll shut this whole house down. This sucks. He was about to win so much money. And then Shannon had to go and try to prove a point, and here we are. <laughs> we haven't eaten for three days. I'll work for food. I don't hire Irish. Now get out of here. This is bad. Yeah, we can't keep wandering like this. I know. I think this house is empty. <laughs> That's a Christmas tree. Food! There's food here. Yes, jackpot. Sit down at this beautiful table. We can't. We're burgling. I want you to pretend. I'll serve you. I want you to dine. That's really sweet. <laughs> 
I'm assuming he has not told her that her family is there looking for her. No, Joseph, don't serve me. Let's pretend that this house is ours, that you are my husband, and I'm your wife. Ho <laughs> pasture with tall grass. A line had a stream running through it. Hmm. Green pasture and a stream. They will complement each other, though. The one, in fact, depends upon the other. Pretend you love me. I pretend I love you. I don't think he has to pretend. I pretend I love you, too. It took him long enough. Good grief. Uh oh. Who's there? Get the hell out of my house! No! Ah! Ah! You've got to be kidding me! No! Help! This girl needs help! Please tell me she doesn't die. I'm gonna be so mad. Sister Christie. Oh my gosh. Shut up. Just let it sit. Step aside. You'll infect her with your filthy hands. Gunshot. Will she be all right? She will now. The wound is in the shoulder. I have to clean it. Shut up. You're safe now. Gotta be fine. Don't you leave. He's gonna leave her. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all, right when they were finally getting together. <gasps> I should have known, but I'm still frustrated. <laughs> Mr. Christie, here's the doctor. Something terrible has happened. What is it, doctor? Your daughter, Mr. Christie. They're meant to be. <sighs> I'm crying. Ugh. The Tom Cruise run, let's go! All right, she's all clear. Eight months? Oh my gosh. He's out west now, isn't he? And he hasn't seen her since. He still thinks about her every day. Wagon train. I'd be going with them if I was as young as you. Doesn't interest me. They're gonna reunite, guys. They're gonna. Maybe he's gonna see her going west on one of those one of those passing wagon trains. Da? Is that you? Joseph! Oh, you look like you're not doing too well, my boy. I missed you, Dad. A man is nothing without land, they say. I'll work on my own land someday. If you manage it, my God, you're old, Dad. Uh, We'll be smiling down on you from heaven above. Go get your land, Joseph, and then get your woman. It's just wasting time. Ain't enough land to go around. You're just dreaming. <laughs> yes, go. Run. Hey, Mac! Where do you think you're going? I was on the wrong road! <laughs> go west, young man. Boy, is this a change of scenery from Boston to this. <laughs> Oklahoma, he made it. Hey, you're a little late, cowboy. Pickens is slim. This here horse, it broke. That horse there, green broke. Know the difference? Red flag. <laughs> ah, broke horse is a dependable horse. A green broke horse. He's faster. Green broke horse. You don't know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Hell, you could end up in Canada on that green broke song. <laughs> I think that takes a dependable horse. I would. <laughs> I 
Oh, the horseshoe. <gasps> it's her, right? <laughs> still doesn't know how to, oh, that's her mom. <laughs> I was gonna say, still doesn't know how to wash clothes. Take the soap and your plunge and scrub. Shut up! I found it. 20 miles straight west of here. There's a winding stream. It's the plot of land you've dreamed of. But not the man she dreamed of. Tomorrow we'll ride as one. We'll claim our land and then we'll marry and finally settle down. You do want to settle down, don't you, Shana? Yes, I want to settle down. That's better. Hello, Shannon. Oh, eight months later. I wondered if I'd see you here. That's I. I saw you living back in Boston all this while. You look well. Here with my family. We came by train. They'd be running in the race tomorrow. I presume. I even bought a horse. Fine horse. Well, time takes care of everything, doesn't it, Joseph? Everything's worked out as it should have. No, not yet. <laughs> Good luck tomorrow, Joseph. Best of luck to you, Shannon. Y'all, <laughs> the mutual pining is killing me. <laughs> Shannon Christie. You knew what you wanted back in Ireland. And look at you. Here you are. You're a corker, Shannon. What a corker you are. Beautiful country, isn't it, boy? I found the perfect piece of land for Shannon and me. The land of her dreams. Congratulations. I'd rather have the husband of my dreams than the land of my dreams, just saying. Stay away from her, do you hear me? There'll be a lot of confusion in the race tomorrow, lad. Someone could get shot. Is that a threat? Somebody's feeling a little threatened, a little in jeopardy. They've got their land all picked out all those months. I was laid down the very track that brought her here. <laughs> Tomorrow I write for me. Me alone. Uh-huh. Sure. Just keep telling yourself that. Oh no, is that where his horse was? That there was the oldest horse I ever saw in my life. He just keeled over and died. Oh my god. Green broke horse it is. <laughs> Nothing's going right for poor Joseph. Well, on the plus side, he'll probably have a much faster horse now that will not just keel over with him on it while he's running full speed. We're gonna miss the photograph. <laughs> that horse isn't even green broke. This stake goes into the ground over there. I'll tell you when. We'll run the horse around in circles. It's got to look all sweaty and tired. It's scary out here, Daniel. Ah, we'll do fine. Pretend we're starting out in life instead of ending up. That looks like the land that Shannon and Joseph were describing. Little hill in it, tall green pasture, stream running through it. <laughs> and find yourself a donkey. <laughs> Joseph! Take him by the bit. Come on, Joseph. Show that stuck-up man. Oh my goodness, that wagon just tipped over. Fire! <laughs> Get on the horse! Get on the horse! Oh, that's unfortunate. Dude, it's better to go slower than to crash and lose all your stuff. I have no wish to fight you. I don't 
think I've ever seen a man punch a horse in the face. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> it would have been great if she'd thrown it and it had hit that guy in the face. Steven, that's his name. Yeah, run like the wind. It's so stressful just having to run at full speed and like pick your land at the same time. Daniel, here they come! Oh my god. No, Nora! No! Ugh. Man, they could have been shot <laughs> if they'd been caught. I love this scene, it's fantastic. There it is! Come on! Go get her, Joseph. Man, to Steven's credit, he just went straight down that cliffside. Uh oh. Sherman! Get up! Grab the reins! Are you alright, Sherman? You're right. Yeah, he Joseph's actually checking on her. Go get your land. Got him. You're not in Ireland anymore. You arrogant bastard. I mean, he pulled out his gun. He was going to shoot him, the jerk. Get it. Do it! This land is mine! Yeah! What's he doing? Go ahead, Joseph! Claim it! Shannon! Yeah. 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 Look out, Joseph! <laughs> Joseph! Joseph! Don't touch no. me! Get away, Stephen! <laughs> Dead gum Steven ruining everything. It's just like what happened to Joseph's dad. You made your choice. Joseph. She doesn't want you, you jerk. I feel myself dying. No. no. Y'all, I swear. You've got your land. With all the land in the world, it's nothing to me without you. I know nothing of books or sun or moon or... All I know is Joseph. Oh, Y'all, if he dies, I'm gonna be so upset. Joseph, no. No. Joseph, please. Please don't leave me alone. Joseph, no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, please. Don't leave me. You have got to be kidding me. I loved you from the first time I saw you. What just happened, guys? Something's happening with the camera. Something's happening with the camera. He's coming back. He's coming back, just like, yes! <laughs> just like his dad! Joseph, you died. <laughs> you died. But he's back! As you can be sure, I won't be dying twice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, literal heart attack. <sighs> Put the stake in the ground! Put it in the ground! <laughs> Y'all, just when I thought I could not love the soundtrack any more than I already did, I am pretty sure that when the credits started rolling, that was Inya's voice that I was hearing. And the credits are still rolling, so I have not got confirmation on that, but I am 99% sure that was Inya. And I love her music, I love her voice, I was geeking out, and I didn't think it could get any better than a John Williams soundtrack, but then I got a John Williams soundtrack plus Inya singing a song that I've never heard before, and it was glorious, a feast for the ears. So I just like sat through that whole song in the credits, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful, I'm gonna have to listen to this a hundred thousand times. <laughs> I'm gonna add it to my playlist. Oh my goodness. 
Y'all, I loved that movie so much. Like, if you're like looking at the list of movies that is like right up Madison's alley, that has to go on the list because man, I, I've really become a big Tom Cruise fan. I love Nicole Kidman. I love Westerns and I know that was not the majority of the movie, but it was part of the movie. The majority, majority was definitely in Boston, but just the era that it takes place in, late 1800s, my favorite time period, two people going out west, making their dreams come true. There's also just nothing that can get me more invested in a story than a good romance. And this had it. I loved the romance so much. <laughs> I loved the mutual pining throughout the movie, but they just won't get around to confessing. And it's just so frustrating. And like everyone, all the prostitutes knew, like <laughs> they all knew they were lying and they were not brother and sister. It's one of those romances where it's like everyone knows, but the two of them. And it's even like they both knew, but just refused to let the other one know. Oh, it was great. It was great. <laughs> I loved how he was so protective of her throughout the movie and always willing to jump to her defense even when it was massively to his detriment, especially uh, at the end of their, their stint in Boston where he was gonna win that fight and he was gonna win all that money but then he just couldn't stand seeing her degraded in that way and he just had to do something about it. I loved it. You always gotta love to a romance where it's, there's like a massive class difference, like one is rich and the other one's poor and there's that class divide but they overcome their differences and they learn to appreciate each other it's like pride and prejudice one comes from just like the the middle class or lower class family and one's comes from like the very renowned and esteemed family and they have those hurdles to overcome and it was really interesting seeing the switcheroo to how the tables turned when he started making all that money and he was dressing nice and everything and she was not making uh, a lot of money and so she was jealous and envious and she started having that grudge against him but also he started getting the big head and started spending more money than he should they both had good points but yeah I just really really enjoyed the story of this movie it was quite a like sweeping epic just going from Ireland to Boston and then to Oklahoma like it was such an, an epic uh, long spanning journey I don't know what the entire time frame was of the movie but it was at least a year because they spent several months in Boston and then it skipped eight years and he was out you know when, by the time they got to Oklahoma another eight months had passed so I don't know I'm assuming it was just sometime like a little over a year that this movie spanned and it's like oh my gosh so much happened in a year <laughs> her running away from her family in ireland and him going with her and how that whole thing happened i was not expecting like when i knew that they were both in this movie what i was thinking and when the movie started i was going okay so he's gonna go to america and i was thinking he was gonna like meet her they were gonna fall in love get married and then go to america together or I was thinking maybe she, like before Nicole Kidman came on screen, I was thinking maybe she's playing an American and he meets her when he goes to America. But neither of those things was what happened. <laughs> and I was not expecting the way that they fell in together and how long it took. Like I did not know that it was going to be such a slow burn romance. I thought it might be kind of a quick thing where they meet, fall in love, get married. And the rest of the movie is them like journeying together. I was not expecting the slow burn romance and I am here for it. <laughs> I loved it. I loved the performances. I loved the story. I loved the characters, the main two characters. I enjoyed their dynamic, their banter, everything about it so much. I loved the score. I loved the, the whole just production design, the costumes. I loved Shannon's costumes. I just kept admiring them throughout the movie. I love 1800s fashion late 1800s especially, I just got totally wrapped up and immersed and invested in this story and these these two main characters especially, I just wanted them to get there happily ever after and I was going to be so upset y'all, I legit thought he was dead. <laughs> the camera starts panning up and I'm like, are we done? This is it? It ends like this? And then it was so bizarre but so hilarious when it does that weird little movement and it starts panning back down and I remembered the start of the movie. And I was like, wait a second, he's gonna come back just like his dad. <laughs> 
but thank goodness he legit came back instead of just like coming back for five seconds and then dying again. Oh my gosh, thank goodness he came back. He's alive, he's okay. They're gonna be homesteading together out on the range, out in Oklahoma territory. I love it. Thank goodness we got a happy ending in this movie because I was not, I was not wanting that tragic ending, guys. I was gonna be sad for the rest of the day. <laughs> so thank goodness it all worked out. I loved this movie, guys. Kudos to Ron Howard. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Be sure to head on over to my Patreon if you want to see the full-length reaction, full-length watch-along, link in the description below. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone, and I will see you guys next week for another Film Friday. Bye, guys. <laughs>